So I thought today I would um, talk to you about, um, well, uh, bullying, because this is what I've been um, focusing on for the past um, 15 years, trying to provide strong evidence that um, being bullied in childhood does contribute to the development of mental health uh, problem. At this stage in my career, and also given the uh, new role that I have with the ESRC, I decided to um, take my research a step forward and try to make a real change um, with the government and how we tackle bullying and mental health uh, problems associated with um, bullying um, at the school and uh, professional level as well. So I'm not going to focus on um, only specific findings. I just want to um, get you through um, a thought process that kind of led me to some conclusion based on our findings. Um, and the first thing, yes, okay. So um, the first thing which is important to, um, to point out is that we now have very strong evidence um, that being bullied in childhood does contribute to mental health problems and especially emotional problems as opposed to more behavioral problems. So there's a strong, strong and robust link with emotional problems, symptoms of anxiety and um, depression in childhood and also um, in adulthood. And I illustrate um, the findings that we have here um, because it is from a natural experiment study that we have as part of the E-Risk study, so a study of twins where we extracted monozygotic twins um, and uh, 100 pairs who were discordant for being bullied and we've observed their different levels of emotional problems and what you can see is that the ones who have uh, been bullied on the left have higher levels of emotional problems compared to their co-twins who haven't been bullied. Now because these two groups are genetically identical and because the twins grew up in the same environment, these factors cannot account for the differences. So we are in a strong uh, place to be able to say that being bullied does contribute um, to uh, emotional problems. And also we've controlled for prior mental health problems uh, before the kids got bullied. So we know that this differences is not accounted for by differences between the twins in terms of their mental health um, problem. So because we cannot do randomized controlled trial with something like bullying, this is um, as good as it can get, I think, in terms of providing strong evidence for a uh, contribution of being bullied to mental health problems. That paper was uh, published in 2018, so 10 years ago, and since then, in the past two years, two other cohort studies of twins kind of replicated those findings. And what is interesting from those two studies is that they also have uh, long-term outcomes, so five years and 10 years later, so they could look at the, um, at the contribution of being bullied in childhood into kind of long-term um, uh, mental health outcomes. So the findings are not just based on our study, but replicated across different cohorts. Um, and based on these, we can with confidence say that um, it is important to support any effort at um, trying to stop bullying behaviors in the school, at home or in the community. So if we reduce bullying behaviors, we should see a reduction of mental health problems in young children. But maybe this is not enough. So maybe we can do better to address mental health problems associated with being bullied in childhood. Indeed, interventions uh, tackling uh, bullying behaviors on average reduce bullying behavior by 20%. So, um, it's unlikely that these programs will be able to eradicate completely those kind of behaviors. Um, and let me make a parallel with criminal behaviors. So no matter what strategy that we try to use, punitive strategies, there will always be you know, crimes uh, and antisocial behaviors. So it's possible that beha bullying behavior, which are part of conduct disorders, um, um, will, will be part of um, of, um, uh, of something that we want to reduce uh, in the future. Um, there's also a possibility that even after we stop bullying behaviors, mental health problems persist. And we found that as part of a um, studies that we conducted 
uh, using data from the National Child Development Study, or otherwise known as the 1958 cohort, where we showed that participants who were bullied between the ages of 7 and 11 had a higher risk of uh, meeting diagnostic uh, criteria for anxiety, depression. Um, they were also had a higher rate of suicidality when they reach age 45. And these are even controlling for childhood confounders, including parental social SES, um, childhood mental health problems, other forms of adversity, including maltreatment and neglect, uh, and low IQ um, as well. Um, these findings have also been replicated by three other cohorts from different countries. So one in New Zealand, one in the um, US, one in Finland, and we have this one. So there is increasingly robust evidence that the effect of um, being bullied in childhood can be persistent up until um, um, midlife. Furthermore, this uh, association is reflected in mental health service use, so it does um, relate to all of you guys. Um, so you can see that those participants who were bullied in childhood at age um, 16, especially for those who were frequently bullied, they had higher rates of using mental health um, services. And you can see that it does decrease as they go further um, in adulthood. But overall, I don't, ah, there it is. Um, so you can see that there's a steep decrease here, and I like to think that treatment have been effective and they're doing better. Um, but still at the age of 50, this difference, here, this difference here is significant. So those who were frequently or occasionally bullied in childhood were still more likely to use mental health services uh, when they reach age 50. And this, Persistence in mental health service use is explained by two different groups. Those who kind of started using early in life and carry on for the rest of their life, and also new onset of um, using services at age 33. By age 42, we didn't have new people who started using um, those services. So obviously, mental, uh, being bullied in childhood have an impact that is um, lasting, um, that can be lasting for a long time, and we need to do better in terms of addressing it, um, its impact on mental health. So as part of um, the research that we conducted, we kind of tried to think about what we can do to better address um, those poor outcomes among those who've been bullied, and we decided in collaboration with the Policy Institute at King's to set up a policy lab and a policy lab basically is a collaborative session that brings together research policy, practitioner and service users' expertise to assess the evidence, understand the obstacle and the constraint to change, um, and, this is, um, and use this understanding to inform policy options to improve the outcome. And the policy lab focus on a particular uh, issue or question. And the question that we've put forward in this case was, is it valuable, feasible, and acceptable to strength intervention focusing on victims or potential victims of bullying in order to reduce mental health problems? So basically saying, so far we've been focusing on stopping bullying behavior, which is the right thing to do. What about we kind of expand the focus of those interventions to focus also on the victims in order to reduce um, the burden of mental health problems? So what we suggest is two ways uh, for doing this, either to prevent young children, preventing um, young children from becoming the victim of bullying or building resilience uh, among those who haven't escaped uh, bullying and who have been um, bullied. So this is always keeping in mind that bullying takes place in a contextual setting so that um, there are some factors that predict young children from being bullied. So going in a school where you have lots and lots of kids um, uh, or going in a school which is uh, in deprived area coming from family where parents' relationship is not great or parenting is not great or even being maltreated or being the victim of abuse um, at home as well. And then you also have individual factors that predispose young children to being bullied, uh, including being young 
and having um, early mental health uh, problems. So together we address um, some of the issues uh, about, you know, related to the fact that we could focus on victims uh, of, being, uh, of being bullied and kind of discuss um, whether we could really kind of think about um, proposing this to the government. And we came up with a uh, policy brief, we have a nice copy here, um, which kind of suggests um, or make several uh, recommendations, but one of them um, suggesting that the governments um, work more closely together, which I think is uh, something very strange, but they don't seem to be um, um, doing that. So the Department for Education kind of working more closely with um, Department of Health in the initiative that they are putting forward to tackle something like bullying or to tackle mental health problems. Um, that we should integrate bullying as part of wider well-being and mental health initiatives in the schools. And I think that the Green Paper is one of those initiatives, so we should make sure that bullying is part of that. Uh, we're not suggesting to um, reinvent the wheel and coming up with new interventions. That's not the aim. It's just making sure that bullying is really part of any mental health intervention and that mental health problems or health is really part of any kind of bullying um, uh, policies that they are in the schools. Um, I think it's important to address age differences that we shouldn't kind of do the same for any kind of um, uh, all types of children and all types of um, different age as well. We could also have some universal intervention um, such as increasing self-esteem or providing social skills for all the kids. They would all benefit from that. But for some kids that are especially vulnerable for being bullied, we could have something a bit more targeted. We suggest as well um, evaluating any kind of uh, programs. It's important that we have uh, evidence based that those um, interventions um, are working. And we need to recognize that those interventions may last, um, may take a long time before they show um, outcomes. But it's important to as well kind of have quick fix to be able to uh, return to the government and say that some things um, are also working. Um, and there you go. So this is the document that we've, um, we've produced um, just recently. And at the moment, we are testing it with um, young group focus groups, uh, with teachers as well. And we're working with the National Children Bureau to be able to um, open up the door of the government and, and see what they think about that. Thank you. Oh. <laughs>